Many years ago, I was asked a very interesting question. Somebody asked me a question, they raised their hand in a seminar and said, Tony, can you change people that don't want to change? Of course you can change people who don't want to change. All you need is the right kind of If you have enough leverage where change becomes an absolute. Now for some people, leverage is not even the threat of their own life. Some people rather die than have you tell them what to do. And so that's not the leverage. The leverage for them might be something for their children. Leverage for them might be spiritual growth. All of us have a leverage point. If you find the leverage, not the leverage you make someone do it, the leverage that will make them make themselves do it. We all have some place that will get us to follow through. Now, if you get enough leverage and if you interrupt the pattern enough, how many of you ever had a pattern when you were a kid and you had like some obnoxious uncle or something and you were trying to be upset and they'd come like rub your damn head or something that make you crazy and you couldn't stay upset because they kept doing this to you. How many had this happen? Say, I. If you have enough leverage and you break someone's pattern enough times, a new pattern will show up. If you're conscious, you can create the new pattern. So the answer is yes. Now then the question would be, Tony, if all it takes is leverage, then why don't most people change? And I had a lot of answers to that, but that night, I'm a night person. That night, I'm wired up after a seminar. It's like two o'clock in the morning, it was December. And so I flip on the television in the back for some white noise looking for CNN, and I come across the old Christmas classic, this Christmas Carol, right? A Dickens classic. And I see it in black and white, and I start watching the movie, and I'm remembering it from being a kid. And as I'm watching this thing, I see this man named Scrooge who clearly doesn't want to change. In fact, he's certain he doesn't need to change because what's happened is his life went through a lot of pain. And when he got pain, he looked for the source of that pain, and he said it was being close to people. So we decided it's people equals pain. Remember the red squares we talked about? So now he wants to avoid people, and he's mean to people. Now, he's also very wealthy financially. He makes up this belief that because I'm mean and tough with people, I'm rich. The truth is, he's financially rich. If you watch the movie, you read the story, when everybody else is gone, who's still working? He is. He's hardworking, he's thrifty, he's smart, he's intelligent, but he thinks he's rich because he's mean. So he doesn't want to lose being rich. He doesn't want to lose not being hurt. So he has a belief. Be mean to people and everything works out, even though he's miserable. Can we have beliefs that make no sense and yet still believe them, yes or no? Sure, we just get wired. So I'm watching this guy. Now, the only way people change is if they associate either enough what? Pain, so they have to change, or they associate changing will equal enough what? And ideally, if you get both, you'll change. If you get, every moment I do this, the pain's getting more and more intense, there's a point where you must change. And if you get, if I change, I get all this pleasure, you're gonna want to change. How many follow? But what equals pain and what equals pleasure is what you associate in your nervous system. So what happens is, the only way you create change is changing what you link pain and what you link pleasure to in your nervous system, not just in your head, in your gut. That's what controls you. Lots of times in your head you know what you should do, but your gut takes over. Your fear, or your greed, or your desire, or your comfort, or whatever. Who knows what I'm talking about here? Say I. But watch this. How many of you used to have a favorite dessert? or a food, or a form of alcohol that you really, really, really loved. And then one night you had an experience like never before, where something happened, where this food or this drink or this alcohol that you love so much, it went down, but it kept coming back up at a level of intensity and with enough aroma and pain and association that to this day, It takes no willpower just to think of that alcohol or think of the smell of that food or look at it makes you appalled, makes you repelled. Who's who's had an experience like this in your life? Say I. Tell me what that change was. Was that a change in willpower? 
No. All that happened is your brain changed what it used to link pleasure to, it now linked pain to. When you link enough pain, it takes no willpower. You're going to avoid it. The problem is some of you are linking pain to things you need, like exercise, right? Or pain what you need, like a relationship, right? And it's the wrong association, but it's going to control your life. Your job is to change what you link pain and pleasure to. So that night, what was pleasure became pain, and now it takes no willpower. You just avoid it. So we call that changing what you associate to things in your nervous system, or for sh short, a neuroassociative change. In other words, changing in your neuro, your nervous system, what you associate pain and pleasure to. So, by the way, in this Christmas Carol story, does this man Scrooge change his life, yes or no? He didn't want to change. Does he change his life a little or completely? And by the way, how fast? An heartbeat, in one evening, how does it happen? Three neuroassociative conditioning specialists show up at his house. Right? Three ghosts show up, and what do they do? They get him to link a massive, unbearable amount of what? To all the things he did in the past around people. Then they go to everything he has in the present pain, and everything in the future pain, till there's so much, there was nowhere to escape. Here's the other reason why people don't change. Because right now, my relationship's in pain. But it was good in the past, so you escape having to change by remembering a good time. Or I might be coughing and having these problems with cigarettes right now, but you know what? George Burns lived to be 102. He smoked cigars, by the way, and he's one out of 10 billion people that pulled that off. But let's not confuse ourselves with ratios. So you make up what the future is. If your present is painful, you can escape to the past and get out of the pressure to change. How many follow this? Say I. Or you can escape to a future because no one knows what it is for sure and you can make it up. But if your brain links, it's been painful in the what? Past, in the, and it's even worse in the, it'll change like that. Who here has ever stayed in a relationship that you knew was not right for you? It wasn't right for you, it wasn't right for them. Who has ever stayed in a relationship way too long? Who's done this before? Raise your hand. Say I. It wasn't good for you, it wasn't good for them, yet you stayed. Why? Why? Because even though it was painful in the present, what'd you do? You said, it'll get better over there in the future. Why'd you, who finally changed? Who here finally changed that? Say I. How'd you do it? Your brain went, it's painful now, it was painful in the past, it's going to be worse in the future, that's it! That's what I call a Dickens pattern. When you lock in pain in all those places, there's no place to escape, so you change. It's like if you put a wall here, a wall here, and a wall here, and we close them in on you, amazingly, you'll move forward. That's what we're talking about, giving yourself leverage on yourself that way, not having someone else do it to you, you do it to yourself. That's when you got the power again. How many get it? Say I.